851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome back to DJ's Aviation. Is the A350-1000 or the 777X better for airlines? This video has been a long time coming. In fact, the idea first came to mind in February of this year, but unfortunately, I was forced to push it back due to circumstances out of my control. However, here we are today. So both these aircraft share similar characteristics and offer airlines long-haul travel with a very adequate capacity. Which is best for airlines though? In today's video, I plan to put forward some cases for the two aircraft, explaining how they suit different airlines and more. Then, by the end of this video, you'll be able to jump into the comments and have a general discussion with everyone about which aircraft you believe best suits different airlines. Now, I just want to make it clear that this video isn't acting as a video to bash either Airbus or Boeing for the product they have on offer. I'll be detailing the many benefits of the two aircraft in this video, therefore keeping it as neutral as possible. Firstly, the A350-1000. What is it? The Airbus A350-1000 is the second variant to the popular A350 series. Similar to the 777X, the A350 series just has two variants. However, this was only after the A350-800 was cancelled in favour of the A330neo. The A350-1000 measures to nearly 74 metres from the tail to the nose and offers customers an upgrade on capacity should they need it over the A350-900. This results in the capacity being at around 350 to 366 passengers as quoted by Airbus. Of course, many airlines will opt for a different configuration, so always know that the number listed by the aircraft manufacturer is just a generic number. The aircraft offers customers a stunning interior, while also offering them wider seats. All this with the lighting contributes to a classy cabin, which according to Airbus, minimises the effects of jet lag. So far, the Dash 1000 has accumulated just over 170 orders since being introduced. The Boeing 777X is Boeing's latest instalment to the 777 series, and comes with just two variants at this point in time, the 7788 and the 7779. Both these two variants offer carriers something very different, with the 7788 specialising in long range, and the 779 specialising in its added capacity. You could say it's quite similar to the A350 series. The 777X will house the world's largest engine, the GE9X, which will offer airlines better than ever efficiency. In addition, it features lower maintenance costs in comparison to the GE90, but also the engine that features on the A350. The 777X will be known for its folding wingtips though, something that while being introduced decades ago is set to revolutionise commercial travel. So far, 326 orders have come in for the two variants with the longer 7779 being the more popular of the two. However, you could certainly argue it's been given a helping hand by Emirates, who have ordered over 100 of the 777-9s. So which is better? Well, despite the way I titled this, the simple answer is not one aircraft can be better than another. While a lot of people have very strong opinions on aircraft, and they are always valid to have this opinion, ultimately decisions will come down to what the airline needs. And while let's say the 777X may be hypothetically a better option, realistically an airline may just prefer the A350-1000. The same goes for any aircraft, say the 737 MAX or the A320neo, the A380 and the 7478. One airline, for instance, may believe that the 7478 is best, but another says the A380 is better. That being said, it doesn't stop me from going into detail about airlines' preferences and what they are looking for. Fleet replacements are often the main cause of an order. The difference between the 777X and the A350 series on a whole is that there's no previous A350CO. The 777X had the 777 series, and as this was a very popular aircraft, many carriers do already operate the likes of the 777-300ER and the 777-200ER. We're seeing a pattern where these airlines go ahead and order the newer 777X. While relationships do have a part to play, often if that carrier is happy with the previous aircraft, they'll simply go and get the upgraded version to last them for the decades to come. Another important factor though is what these aircraft can actually replace. While it's all well and good for let's say the 777X to replace the 777, if that's it, it means the carriers will only order it if they need to A, replace it, or B, purchase a new long-range aircraft. 
As an example, Qatar Airways operate the A350-1000 for expansion. At the same time, they use it on their long-haul flights because it has added capacity and means they can seat more passengers on each flight over the A350-900. But the A350-1000 is not necessarily replacing all of the 777 aircraft that they do operate. Qatar has opted for the 777X to do that job. This highlights how carriers don't always have to go with the one aircraft. They have lots of options available to them. Another factor to consider is further development. Take Project Sunrise for example. I know I mention it a lot, but it is the perfect example for so many scenarios. Qantas want an aircraft that can fly for 20 plus hours, seat around 300 passengers and be efficient, while at the same time having the ability to fly to the likes of Hong Kong, Singapore, all from Australia. Essentially, they want it all. While Airbus offers just the standard A350-1000, they are going out of their way, from what we know, to offer Qantas something different. That being the rumoured A350-1000 ULR, an aircraft that will be exactly like the standard Dash 1000, but with a catch. It will be able to fly ultra-long range routes like the A350-900 ULR. It will just have that added capacity, which is what Qantas is looking for. While the 7 is another great aircraft Qantas could opt for at the moment, it doesn't have what Qantas is looking for. This decision by Qantas won't come down to which is better in general, but more which suits their operations better. That's what I've been saying. It all comes down to what the airline needs for their operations, not necessarily what is better overall. Let's compare the two aircraft a little bit more now though. Currently, the 7 would offer carriers more capacity. In fact, it's around 16% more than that of the A350-1000. The problem is, though, the A350-1000 has a lower trip cost because of this. If Airbus launches either their rumoured A350-2000 or A350-1000 ULR, which has room for more seats, then the two may stack up absolutely perfectly. These figures, though, come down greatly to how an airline fits its aircraft out. You could see a 7 with less seats than the A350-1000, despite what Boeing said was the capacity. This is because some airlines can opt for a two-class configuration where they have more business seats. Of course, because business seats are wider and have more space, they do take up more space. While we may see another airline go for four classes or two classes again, but have more economy seats, therefore their capacity will be higher. However, if we just stick to the number which Boeing provided us, the 7 is a bigger risk. You need to know that you can fill the aircraft up with that 16% more capacity, or it might not be viable for you to operate with it. This is why we often see established carriers like Singapore, All Nippon Airways, Emirates, Qatar, Etihad and more, all ordering the 777X. Unlike, say, a developing airline, they know that they'll be able to fill the aircraft, or manage if they can't fill it for, say, a week. While it's certainly about fleet replacement, relationships and more, it's also a big numbers game. Efficiency is key. It's no use buying an inefficient aircraft just because it suits your operations. It needs to be good for you on a whole. Before finishing up, the 777X offers carriers folding wingtips, a feature which has many positives for airlines. I thought what I'd do now, seeming we're talking about the 777X, is take the opportunity to have a look at this feature and what it actually offers airlines. As you know, the A350-1000 does not feature these folding wingtips. The 777X is wide, very wide. However, these folding wings will fold upwards into wing tips when the aircraft is on the ground. This will allow the aircraft to maximise its efficiency while in the air through its raked wing feature, similar to what is found on the 787. We often give that the name of the wing flex. When on the ground though, it will still be able to fit into the spots allocated at the airport. When fully extended, the wingspan of the aircraft will be a whopping 235 feet, but when on the ground, it'll be just 212 feet. Thanks to all these features, Boeing claims that the 777-8 will be 4% more fuel efficient than the A350-1000, while the 777-9 will be 12% more fuel efficient and 11% more cost effective. That's my in-depth look at the A350-1000 and the Boeing 777X. If you have any thoughts on the two aircraft, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section that in the comment section below. Whether it be about an airline you think should order the aircraft 
or maybe what you believe is better overall. I'd love to hear all your opinions. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to throw it a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in and I very much look forward to you all joining me in the next one.